Hello. I'm Nook. This is Colonel Failure. Hello. We're going to talk about some YouTube things. It's YouTube things. Important business. Important things. Um, what do you think? I think that's a good intro. How do we know each other? Uh, we're YouTube brothers. Yeah. Obviously. We, we started, I, th I was just looking at it. We started four days apart. Madness. You got me beat. You're my older twin. You got me beat by four days. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, but as is always the case in sibling rivalry, you've since completely outstripped any progress that I've made. And, and you're uh, it's, double It's a grudge size. I've been hanging on to for a while. <laughs> yeah, well, we were neck and neck for ages. Uh, and uh, yeah, we were, I, um, we were real close for, I mean, I just had like a, um, a bit of a boom there, um, a few months ago. What, what, what caused what us, what was, what us what apart, the, but what was the catalyst behind the, uh, behind the exploding growth? Uh, YouTube luck. I, I, I put it all into that. What, which, um, which game were you playing at the time? Um, I think the big boost was uh, last fall, and it wasn't anything in particular. It's just I had several games. You know how it works. Like, you do a, a video and and you get your usual amount of views, and just all of a sudden you'll get one that YouTube will take and just sort of spew it to random people's uh, uh, home pages. Yeah. And I had I had three or four games that month that that sort of. Uh, the sort of exploded it kind of like the first i did this for i think probably the same boat i did this for like the first three years <clears throat> i think i was at maybe i think i hit like tw ten thousand subscribers after the third year yeah i think it's about about where i was and then all of a sudden um back when when starship theory came out you remember that one no it was sort of like a rim like a rim world in space okay building on a spaceship um sadly got abandoned um, but that was the first time I ever had a video that got like spewed out there like that. I've never really had a, um, I never had a big video, you know, yeah. one that people have their, their, their one hit. I never had one of those. Um, I had that series that did really well and that jumped me from somewhere in the tens up to 20. And that's sort of just elevated it from, from the typical, I don't remember what I was getting then, the number of views I was getting per day Yeah, and like tripled it quadrupled, quadrupled it and it's hung around there for quite a while so and, uh, so what is your biggest hitter at the moment how what, how many views has your uh, has your number one had I, I just hit a million on my biggest ah which ah, was yeah. which is world box yeah old world box it doesn't really fit with what i normally play on the channel but that's one of those that no, youtube it doesn't matter no it, it spewed all over <laughs> and and i've so i've done a few of those now uh because they all seem to do pretty well no, because I'm in the same boat, and uh, and did it, it causes quite a lot of uh, kind of strokey beard action uh, for me, is trying to figure out exactly why I am or aren't uh, making any headway. So my my number one just passed two hundred thousand. Uh, so mm. I've not had any level of breakout uh, whatsoever. So your 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 monster hit, or your for you your monster hit. What sort of mm -hmm. view count does that get in a month now, even though it's it's obviously a little bit older? Oh, it's still usually my number one, and I think it's normally around thirty thousand, right, a month views. Well, that's, on that, that stacks one. up because uh, you know the, you get YouTuber envy uh, of of kind of going like, why is it that? I'm not. Why am I having to pedal so hard to try and get any any traction anywhere at all? And uh, what seems to work is uh, if you do land uh, a big hitter of any kind at all uh, on your channel. In fact, it doesn't matter what size of channel you've got. The biggest hitter you get is the engine for views on a very long term basis. Uh, so if you get something that goes off like a rocket uh, and you get to or let's say, I don't know, 50,000, 100,000 views over the space of a couple of months, it will continue to just build and build and build in, in perpetuity. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas the lesser stuff on your channel just doesn't, it kind of yeah, it has, just, has its moment be, in the sun and then disappears. Yeah, it um, has its half-life. It goes, it goes a couple of days and then it dwindles out. Yeah. 
And then you get those few that come in, and that's what happened to last there in last fall. I had like four of them that would they start out normal. Yeah. The first few days, nothing big, and then five days later, and just all of a sudden, there's a surge in views in each of those, mm-hmm. um, and it just happens from time to time. Um, and and it's just sort of the will of of the almighty algorithm. Oh, well, yeah, um, it's yeah, it is the will of the almighty uh, the algorithm, but uh, it's. Uh, right material, right place, right time. Uh, yeah. that, that's the that's the, the the golden circle of hey, I made a winner. Uh, the actual quality of it doesn't generally tend to matter. <laughs> uh, it, it's just having the right stuff at the right time. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, okay, all right, good. But now we've got a, a, a very different philosophy when it comes to uh, covering games. So you know, I'm uh, I'm a long series kind of a guy, uh, and I stick with games for months and months and months, and I put together massive long playlists that people can then work their way through. Whereas you are mm-hmm. the complete opposite. Yep. <laughs> um, I I started out that way. Yeah. Um, I started out old games, uh, playing like old XCOM and old Master of Orion, um, and I did. I I got a few that were you know over a hundred videos. Yeah, and um, somewhere along the way, uh, I, I sort of stumbled into the indie game world, and um, I, I, I kind of I guess there was a point in there where I kind of had a like, what's the point? What am I doing this for? Like, why would I? Why would anyone watch me? Yeah, when you can go and watch Splattercat or, <clears throat> or or Quill, you know, someone that knows what they're doing. Yeah, record and, and do these videos, and so I kind of saw myself as. Uh, I like these indie games. I like weird games. Um, I, I like to see myself as someone that goes in and kind of does a lot of digging and tries to find the the more niche things and show them off. Um, a lot of those are in early development, so there's not much more than one videos out that you can get. But it's sort of like a hey, this is out there, um, and that's sort of where it grew. And it leads to trying... leads to your view counts being all over the place because obviously I, I don't you know oh, yeah. I don't, I got into doing this on a you know, fairly academic basis, uh, and I try and work out why is something working versus not working. Um, and your view counts go, they're up and down like a like a yo-yo. Uh, and it comes yep. down to, I guess, how many people are looking for a video on the topic that you're covering. Yep. Uh, and when you find one that, that, uh, that there isn't any competition, but there is a high level of interest, you do well. Uh, but then if there isn't any competition then there's less interest, you don't do quite so well. A lot of it boils down to what's coming out. <clears throat> right. Um, it, you know, you get the views whenever... If you get a video out when a game is coming out, you get more people looking for it. And if you have, like, a, a lull in, in good new games coming out, like um, just in January, for instance. Yeah. wasn't really anything coming out. After Christmas, there's always like sort of that period of no one's going to release anything during the Christmas sale and mm-hmm. um, early New Year. There's nothing coming out, so... You know, everything sort of drops, um, and then you just, you just wait for the next wave, February or March, when the new stuff comes out and comes back. So, so how many, very how many up and down thing? How many unique games have you covered? Do you know? All together? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, a lot. Um, I typically get. I mean, I usually do one a day. Right. Usually one new in a day is typical. Sometimes I do two. <clears throat> Uh, sometimes I sometimes I don't get one done, so we'll say three hundred and fifty a year. Okay. For the past for the past four years. That's that's so. that's some strong going. So you're looking at what twelve fourteen hundred games that you've covered. That's re- that's recorded. I, I I play I test out a lot more than that that don't get on the channel that I put in. I mean I I won't ever put in more than ten minutes if it doesn't hook me or or whatever. And yeah. My my usual system is to watch someone else play the game. Plenty of other folks out there that have that have huh. at least okay. have found them, so I'll, I'll just do that rather than right, why bother me trying to learn the game when I can just watch someone else dabble with it and try to get get a hang of it, and see if it's good. Yeah, and then I'll go in. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't learn any games very well, as as my commenters will proudly the, shout. <laughs> uh, no, I'm the, 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 but I'm not anybody. here to show you how to play the game. I just show you the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just playing it. You can play it better if you like. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. that's that's fine no I, I i'm exactly the same is is that i mean even doing a long series but you know i could be at part 40 in a in a playthrough 
and uh, and I'll have people going like, you know, you're doing this all wrong, and I'm going to go, no, <laughs> I'm not. There, there is no such thing as playing a game wrong. As long as you're having fun playing the game, you're playing the game right. That's what it was designed for. Uh, you right. want to go and take the optimum path, be my guest. That's not fundamentally what I exist for. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why, did you, why did you get started then? I mean, for some reason, in some point in 2014, we both had the same brainwave at around the same time to start putting ourselves on the internet and subject to ridicule. Why? Um, I was bored. Uh, what was the, the, the short <laughs> story? <laughs> um, uh, me and my friends, we had been playing, played WoW and Eve, just sort of on an MMO, my MMO group. Yeah. And we had, they had all, and, and I had moved over to Dota, and we were playing that religiously for, man, a year, two years. Mm -hmm. And I've never really burned out from a game. But I, I hate that game. <laughs> uh, I, would love, I was great at first, but man, I have burned out from a game, and that's Dota. Um, and it was Dota night, and I was like, I can't do it. Even, even, even hanging with my friends, I can't do it. Um, and I had recently, really just recently, sort of discovered YouTube, because my, my kids, who were pretty young then, were watching all like the, young, like the Minecraft people, you know? Yeah. And sort of my idea of what a YouTuber was was some kid yelling and 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 having having a, a day um but there's a game coming out and i, I thought well I'll, I'll take a look and see uh, before i buy this game check it out i stumbled across quill 18 and i thought hey there's a normal person that's kind of like me that's that's playing games that i like yep. to play uh uh and and it matched all that up with um he had also put out like a tutorial on how to do this um with my extreme anger towards Dota 2 and boredom, and then I, I went and I, I thought, I'm going to play some Master of Orion 2 on Twitch. And so I I started streaming, and uh, I had one person start watching me. Um, knowing what I know now, it was probably a bot. Yes, <laughs> but I was very well, excited about well, it. Well, I don't know. You're, you're, you're in the early days for bot traffic at that point. but uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. I, and I, I, I came back the second day to finish the game and, and that person came back for the second day. Right. And so, so then I was hooked. I was like, okay, this is good stuff. They didn't say anything, but there was someone watching me. And, um, and with that and then a lot, and then I got into XCOM and then, and then I st stuck with it. So that's, that's the long story. Short story. <laughs> I was bored. It, did, it, just, it suddenly occurs to me that my video camera is placed directly in front of my webcam. So if you'd if you'd hope to use this footage, it's totally useless to you. So I'll I'll okay, send we, only, you, we only wanted to see three quarters of your face anyway. I'll, so it's I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> either you can either go with it that way, and I can you know occasionally emerge from behind my <laughs> flippy screen, um, uh, or or I'll send you the footage if you want to make use of it. Um, all right, no, no, uh, uh, good stuff. So you, I mean, the, so it was Quill that you were kind of looking up to as like an aspirational channel when you kicked off. Yeah, for sure. At the very beginning, uh, he's all I watched. Um, I found him playing Tropico Five was the game that I found him playing. Yeah, and um, I got through into his channel. He was he was playing. He had Sid Meier's Pirates, and he had Master of Variety. He had all the stuff that I liked, and he was the only thing that I would watch for a long time. Um, and so yeah, so I yeah I emulated, especially early on, I, I emulated him, and that was sort of my inspiration i suppose or just this is how you do it you know and when did you ram so i mean did you go because you're a a, a multi-video per day kind of a dude you've you've done over three and a half thousand now um mm. and uh you know I, i'm in second place there i've only done two and a half thousand but i mean we're both taking what could well be described as a slightly brute force approach uh to uh to building up a channel presence um yeah when did you really start to kick it into high gear? Um, I've pretty much always done at least one video a day. Um, even from the start, I started out with <clears throat> Twitch. I thought, you know, why do YouTube when you can just stream it and then move the VODs over? Um, so when I did it early on, I, I did um, the Master of Orion and 
thought, that's fun. Let's do it again. So I went back and played some Civilization 2 or Civilization 1. Right. And the XCOM. And so, I, yeah, and so I was, I was just cranking, especially early on, I was cranking them out multiple. I didn't know the, I didn't know the way to do it. So I was just throwing yeah. as many videos as I could in a day. Um, and it wasn't until I started really getting into a groove with XCOM, which was my third thing I played. Uh, which is still only like a week at week later, week or two weeks later. Yeah. Um, I started doing the one video a day thing, just to try to make some sort of series because I was watching more YouTube and people were that's how they were doing it. So I guess I'll do it this way too. Yeah. And I've I've always done I just always had I don't think I've ever missed more than two days um, in a row from the whole time. So do you uh, do you ever take vacations? So you, you know you'll queue up a, oh, bunch, yeah. a, a bunch of videos yeah. and, um, and take time out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not not in the last year, but uh, normally, yeah. Um, we'll do uh, be gone for a week or so, and I think as long as I was gone, maybe two weeks, and I'll just I'll just get a batch recording, which I don't like doing. Yeah. Um, but I, I will. Uh, I'll just typically then. I'll, I'll the last time what I did I think I did a live stream and I just played a bunch of different games on the live stream and then just used those VODs as my vacation filler just to have something out there yeah yeah no no um, I get that that makes sense you always hear the stories of like the algorithm gets angry if you don't if you aren't consistent and um, yeah, I guess because I've just the, never I've just never taken a vacation I don't want to I don't want to risk it I'm not sold on the stories. I uh, what 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 the I don't think the algorithm gets angry. I think the uh, I think that you can please it, uh, and uh, so it's not that you're uh, you're punished if you take a spell of absence, uh, but you can do better if you don't. Um, yeah. Uh, the, and the one thing that I have noticed in a uh, a cause and effect fashion, and this might be what you saw last uh, last autumn, uh, is. Uh, when you have a successful video, uh, it will give you... Here's how it works, right? I've observed enough to kind of get a, a semi-human, organic feel for how does this thing work. You put a video out. Uh, you have a normal reach of whatever your normal reach is, right? Let's say 100, right, for the sake mm -hmm. of argument. It's 100. 100 whatever, doesn't matter. When you put a video out... For the first couple of days, it goes to your normal hundred. Uh, it, it reaches your normal hundred and goes. Uh, Here you go. Come and have a come and have a look at this. And so your your regular folk, they'll come in and give it a look. If they stick around a little bit more than usual, uh, then the algorithm will go. Oh, let's kick this one up a gear. Or if they respond at a higher rate than usual, the the algorithm will go. Let's let's kick this up a gear. Um, Oh, and the other thing is, it's not your normal 100, it's 100 plus 10%. It adds an extra 10% on top to f give you the ability to grow. Um, otherwise, you'd never get anywhere from zero. Uh, so so you, right. you put your video out, the algorithm gives you just a little bit of extra boost uh, to see if maybe you attract some more people. Um, and if you do well, it will then go, right, let's spool this one up a little bit further. Now, when you then release your subsequent video, it looks at your last one. And I think it looks over the last uh, kind of 10 to 14 days of your performance over, over the last 10 to 14. And whether you are over-indexing compared to what it thinks you should do. And if you're doing well, it will go, right, let's add some more juice to this one as well. And so it runs on streaks. And if you hit a streak that, uh, where you're hitting popular video, popular video, popular video, like three, four in a row, it will keep applying more and more energy to, uh, to the promotion that it's giving your work. And that's where the explosive stuff comes from. But if you then stick out one that completely fails to hit an audience whatsoever, uh, it will go, oh, that's a bit disappointing. We'll drop the energy off a little bit. And the longer the streak of they're not interested anymore, continues the uh the worse you get penalized for that until you're back to your your resting heart rate as it were um but i've seen yep. that happen in enough places uh to kind of go yeah if you do nothing but uh, but hits one after another the the level of growth you get is extraordinary um mm -hmm. whereas 
you can take all of the energy out of that growth rate by putting out one or two videos that just don't find that same audience uh, and then you'll you'll drop back off again so it's about yeah. when you when you find the wave you've got to you've got to sit on top of it that's my yeah. that's my uh, theory yeah, that, anyway that, that, and obviously I'm that's... really good at it obviously <laughs> oh, um, obvi have you had obviously. any times where where you have the high the high runs, but you have the low runs where it just all of a sudden you get nothing. Yep. Have you had that happen? Yeah. Yeah. And you get like, man, like a month. I've had a couple, a couple months. It's happened to where like it's just a year. Like, what's the point anymore? I don't, don't, <laughs> where you don't, get nothing. I've 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 been in a an eighteen month rut, uh, and it's, discour it's discouraging. It's very discouraging. Yeah, I don't, those... because the numbers stop going in the direction you want. Or, or yep. they, they keep going, but ever so gently. Uh, and you just have to, I mean, it's a mental headspace thing. You have to kind of go like, am I happy doing this? Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you kind of go, no, look, the numbers are all going up. They might not be going up at the pace that you want, but they are still kind of moving in the right direction. Shut up, yeah. get back to work. Um, and uh, and then at some point the sun will shine again because you will be in the right place at the right time with the right video. Yep, just gotta stick with it. That's the yeah. That, you're not gonna win if the you golden don't. message. Oh uh, well, we talked about my beginnings. Hmm. I want to hear your beginnings. Four days before me, what what brought you? To uh, uh, I would. Uh, the uh, I'd been working in the games industry for fourteen years uh, up to that point. Uh, I mean, Developing. Yeah, uh, uh, publishing. Mostly, um, hmm. the, I'm, a, I'm a community manager. That's my, that's my, my yeah. background. Um, and I, I got into the games industry by building communities by being a webmaster, as it was called mm -hmm. back in 2000. Um, the old and, days. Uh, I was playing a heck of a lot of Ultima Online. That's, uh, that's, you know, that's my MMO of, uh, of choice, uh, although Star Wars Galaxies was better. Um, and, uh, and I was building just clan sites and guild sites and uh and ladders uh which is what esports used to be called um and uh a job came up at ea to be the webmaster for ultima online in europe and i went i've built so many websites for this game i'm surely a shoe in and sure enough i got a job so i started out doing websites for ea and then i moved over into managing the communities that have been built up so i was managing communities for battlefields and and fifa and the sims and need for speed all at the same time uh which is quite an interesting audience brain shift uh but i've been doing that and <laughs> at the time i was working on call of duty um for activision and the studio i worked for made the the partner app uh call of duty elite which if you don't remember that's okay Good. nobody really used it um uh, and uh, and so they closed the studio down. The studio was based in in California, and I was based in London. And uh, I was there. I was there. It was the team's only UK employee, and I was there to look after rest of world. And I went, okay, yeah, that's fine. I'll look after rest of world. And they uh, they had a bit of studio reorganise after about I don't know about twelve months of this app really going nowhere. Um, and I went like, they're going to come for me any day. They're, co they're coming. I can feel it. And so uh, Activision said, we've reorganized the studio. And unfortunately, there isn't a role for you after the reorganization. I went like, you know, I've been, I've been waiting for the call. Because you hang around the games industry long enough. And you know that, you know, redundancies happen. You know, you, you kind of go like, your role really doesn't make any sense anymore. Um, so Activision said, here is a very large envelope full of cash. Uh... Thank you very much for, for helping us out. So, I mean, absolutely no ill will uh, on my side of things because I'm, th th this is something you don't hear very often. Activision really do look after its employees incredibly <laughs> well. Um, uh, EA do as well. These big, monstrous publishers that you kind of go, oh, they're destroying the games industry, they're actually really good for their employees. Um, so Activision gave me a massive bag of cash, which was effectively... I don't know, nine, ten months salary at the time. Nice. Uh, and, uh, and I went, I've been in constant employment for, for 14 years working on games. And of late, I have been increasingly talking to streamers 
and YouTube channels. And when I first got into games, into the games industry, I was running fan sites. And, uh, and as a community manager, I was looking after fan site owners and I knew exactly what they wanted because I'd been one. I thought, mm -hmm. I've got some time on my hands. People are offering me consulting work here and there to, you know, so I can make some money doing that. I'll go out and learn what these, uh, and this is right, right at the start of when they started being called influencers as well. Uh, yeah. I, I, I want to learn what they've been through so that I can help, uh, so I can work with them better. And if I happen to become a YouTube millionaire at the same time, then I'll just accept that. That will be okay. Uh, so, yeah, I, it was a, an academic exercise. I wanted to get a <laughs> feel for what's so hard. So, I mean, I, I was familiar with channels like uh, Pro Syndicate and, uh, and Ali A and... Uh, and I'd done some work with with Yogscast and with Hat Films, um, so I I knew a, a wide variety of of kind of channel approaches. Um, didn't want to be like any of them. I went, I'm a I'm a bloke in me in my early forties. Uh, that's going to be my thing. I'm, I'm British and I'm a bloke in my early forties. That's that's my hook. Um, so yeah, I went to, I, I I went in. I started playing Factorio. Uh, so this was that. That's what you started with, is Factorio. Factorio, yeah. First fifty videos, mm. all Factorio, um, and that was while it was still alpha. So it was before it, it was ooh, two, three years before it landed on Steam. Um, yeah. So it was still, you know, back it through the uh, through the developer. So I just I played mm. that, and then I then I added. Uh, I, I I tried a few other games, but didn't. But kind of bounced off them. But then found Train Fever. Uh, which yeah. I was late to. It had come out and uh, probably six months previous. And when I started covering it, there were actually only like four, five, maybe six channels that were covering it at all. And they mm -hmm. were they were all quite in you know they were all quite religious about the the pace at which they were they were covering it. But yeah. uh, they all had a very kind of serious minded playthrough. Whereas I'd started learning. Actually, I'm just going to muck about with it. I'm going to try, you know, uh, uh, things that shouldn't work but kind of do while mm -hmm. still building up a, a full series. And so I gradually uh, reined in and overtook each one of those channels. Uh, and, and it was like, ah, oh, doing something right. And then Transport Fever, the sequel, came along. And, and I was the number one Train Fever channel at that point. And so I had... All of that uh, authority, YouTube authority, uh, kind of built up behind me, and I built up, and I gained six and a half, seven thousand subscribers in a month. Um, just ah. after, which when you're a two thousand sub channel, you kind of go, "This is yeah, it! It's massive. the big time." I'd look at, I'd mm -hmm. look at the app every morning, and uh, and the and the peak would continue to grow, and I go, "I don't know how long <laughs> this is going to go on for, but it's amazing." Um, and uh, yeah, no, so that was 2016, I guess. So after about two years, I, mm. I kind of had a, a big surge and then it was yeah. back to kind of grinding away, you know, building back up again. So yeah, mm. so that's why I got into it, to, to learn it. And, and as a result, I've got a massive spreadsheet full of data. Uh, I look at every video I've ever made. I used to do it on a weekly basis but that became kind of unsustainable. So I now do it once a month, is I go through every video I've ever made and track how it's performing. Um, uh, oh, you just study the analytics yeah. of the, 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 views Yeah, I export and... all of the data and then analyze it in... Oh, really? Yeah, in other Man, ways. Man, I, I always... I, I really like the analytics. I'm, I'm a bit of a numbers nerd. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I, I stepped down from that, though, because I didn't do anything... I don't do anything like that. I... Um, one of the things that really hooked me on it on YouTube in, uh, early on, they didn't have the real time views thing back then. Yeah, but you could still keep an eye on the you know the views after I think it was like a day or so when it came in. Um, and yeah, I was addicted to those, Just seeing all the numbers, and um, I, I still I'm always in, in on the app on the studio app, watch my stuff. But um, how how often I've never do you, downloaded uh, how, anything. Hold on, I'll show it to the right count. How often do you look at that? 
Um, you know, where, you, where you kind of go every, multiple times each day, you're kind of going, how are we doing? Yep. Oh, all right. Okay. Yep. All right. yep. Yeah. I'm embarrassed to say more than I should. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's addictive. Uh, whenever yeah. whenever the real-time views came out, which was, what, like a year or so after, maybe not even that long after we started, um, I remember I would, man, I was, uh, it, uh, shameful, shameful to say, but I would, I remember watching it, and I would, so I'd see a, a real-time view come in on, like, part one, and I'd, so I'd wait 30 minutes, and then, oh, there's a real-time view on part two. I got Beautiful. one. <laughs> 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 that, well, actually, and this is that's something interesting I find on... Because, I mean, the reason that I started tracking the, the videos on a video-by-video -video basis is I wanted to understand how does the long tail work? Uh, will you continue to get views on, uh, on older stuff after it's been published? And mm -hmm. the short answer is yes. Uh, the, the longer answer is, but not as many as you are expecting, uh, unless it is a major video. Uh, a, a video that performs strongly always performs strongly for years into yep. the future. Yep. Uh, you know, I've got a, a part one on the original Transport Fever that is still doing 1,500, 2,000 views a month. Now, that's not a great number of views, but that game's four years old and it's been supplanted by a sequel since then but it's still doing four thousand views a month um and yep. you kind of go like well, hold on, all right then um but and from a money perspective those big ones pay better better ad oh revenue. they really do uh, the, in a yep. in a long term as well is though it's what i used to call britney spears theory right uh, which shows about the time that i originated the theory anyway britney releases a new record <laughs> And uh, and it does okay. She makes a nice big splash of cash on day one. Uh, and then she goes on and works on new stuff. Uh, the amount of money she makes from it eases off, but it never drops to zero. Uh, so, you know, four years later, and Britney's still getting a couple of bucks a month off that one record she put out because uh, it's, it's still generating a few sales every month. Fast mm -hmm. forward 20 years, and assuming she's got a career... Which was why it was Britney Spears' theory, I assumed, that she would have a long, illustrious career and <laughs> wouldn't go the path that she's chosen there. Um, uh, and, you know, and it would still be generating a couple of bucks here and there. And you kind of go like, now that's no, you can't make a living off that one item. Although, you know, many popular one-shot wonder songs have done. Um, but... She's recorded other stuff since then. She hasn't got one thing. She's got 500 things that are all contributing a, a trickle of interest on a, on a yep. monthly basis. And she's, she's benefiting from that. So that was, so I, so analyzing the long tail was something that I desperately wanted to do, but you can see people move through playlists. Uh, it, and it, I mean, when I was analyzing it on a weekly basis, you would see, you know, a chunk of people one week would arrive in, you know, part one of a two-year-old playlist. And then mm -hmm. the following week, you'd see that they'd moved through parts two, three, four, five. Uh, I, I get probably one comment a month going, I'm watching this whole playlist back to back over the course of the weekend. And you kind of go, there's like 70 hours of video in there, dude. I mean, take a break from it for crying out loud. I mean, you're you're going to be just listening to me chuntering on and on and on all weekend. I'm not sure the human mind is equipped for that. <laughs> um, I think one thing that that, that does, I've just sort of had a, a, a thought about this a few months back, where because I do the one video a day, different game. Yeah. And, uh, and you do, like, where a big series. And I think that you may have a, a more a more loyal... Uh, following of 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 viewers yeah consistent because consistent when i think base. of who i watch yeah um i watch the people that put out the series and those are the ones i consider my my loyal youtube watchers or that i watch yeah um there's some people that i watch that that do what kind of what i do where they just do what you know different, and i don't you know yeah i like their stuff but i wouldn't consider myself a fan and so um I've tried to get back in that a little bit where I do a little series on things just mm -hmm. to kind of, it's also fun for me. And that's sort of the, my, my channel motto is if you've got the right, make game, sure it's fun. Sure. It's gotta be fun for me. Yeah. Otherwise I won't do it. Um, and so I, I think that there's a, there's a certainly a benefit in, in doing the long-term stuff for the, there's also a downside to it. What is your normal 
subscriber to non-subscriber split? Uh, it's usually around, it's usually in the 30, 33-ish subscribed, <laughs> high yeah. 60s non. Flip it. That's what I get. So oh, really? I'm, that I'm at about 65 to 70% already subscribed. Um, now, that's yeah. great because it means that I'm kind of kicking out the stuff that they actually want to see. Uh, yeah. Now, th I mean, that in itself brings its problems. Um, uh, is that once you build a, uh, a kind of a genre base, if you move outside that genre base, you've got to build up a fresh audience to, to, to yep. watch that genre being played. Um, but... Uh, that, I don't, okay, it's another one of my little theories. The little theories, I've got loads of them, right? Is that there are three kinds of viewers, right? You've got, uh, you've got your, your viewer type number one, uh, who quite happily watches your video because they were searching for that subject matter. They stumble across your video. They enjoyed it. They watch it. Maybe they come back for another one. Maybe they don't. Viewer type number two is uh, is the kind of person, they turn up for the video that they want to see because they've searched it or been recommended it or whatever, but they, they watch that and they kind of go, yes, this is the person I want talking to me on this topic. Uh, and so they are they are loyalist within that, that kind of topic area or that kind of genre bubble, however big that might be. Mm -hmm. uh, and then your third tier viewer, love those guys, They'll watch you reading the phone directory. Um, <laughs> they, they'll watch anything. You, you put anything out, and they're going to go, I'm there. I'm into it. What do you got for me today? Um, yep. And, uh, and I've, got a, I've got a reasonable number of you. And you're never going to get everybody into that group three kind of a mix unless right. you have a, uh, a shtick that is particularly uh, appealing. So, uh, so I've got one of my go-to channels for, for kind of referencing here, here's someone who has done it right is, uh, is Josh at, at Let's Game It Out. And he just destroys games um, by taking them to extremes. And he's quite funny. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and therefore, I'll watch him play anything. It doesn't matter. Uh, and I imagine yeah. all of his viewers will watch him play anything because it just doesn't matter. But he started out just doing kind of satisfactory and ruining it um hmm. but there you go so i mean that's the, that's kind of your three your three viewer groups uh but it means that yeah we're 70 percent of my audience being kind of focused on the genre if i want to go the worst thing i can do on my channel is play a space game any kind of science fictiony game whatsoever <laughs> and uh <clears throat> and my regular audience who who tend to like uh real world uh, networks, trains, infrastructure building, that kind of zone. Maybe you could spin yeah. out into a bit of Tropico. That's okay. I could probably go for Civilization and not lose too many uh, of those re recurring viewers. But if I go and play something sci-fi, I get a lot of people just going to go, no, 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 that's not for me. I did a very yeah. long-running baseball series on Sundays. So uh, I play Super Mega Baseball uh, on my channel for a palate cleanser. I wanted to be able to commentate on something else uh, for, mm -hmm. you know, just as a reset the brain and talk yep. about something different. And then without, you know, without any shadow of a doubt, every week my views would be like this during the week. And then Sunday would roll along, which is when my baseball video came out and it got dropped like a rock. Um, <laughs> but the people who watched it loved it. They, they go yep. and go, I know exactly why you're doing this. I get this entirely. Uh, so I've, I've spun that out on a separate channel because... Uh, otherwise, what you end up doing is you build one audience who likes one thing, you build another audience who likes another thing, they don't like each other's things, apart from those lovely type 3 viewers who watch everything, um, mm -hmm. and you end up in a scenario where, on a regular basis, you are failing to attract the people that you've already done the job of bringing in in the first place. Yeah. <clears throat> but then, you know, what do I know? You've got double my number of subscribers. <laughs> Dang, damn it. Uh, are you full time <clears throat> now? I am. Yeah. I, um, thanks to the pandemic, I'm full time. Um, I, at the, I got kind of lucky because at the end of last year, whenever that big boom happened, yeah. Um, it gave me the confidence that maybe I could, I had a part time job forever. Even before I did YouTube, I was, I had an eBay store. So right. I, I kind of worked out from home. Um, and it was always my, my joke was the, the secret to having a, um, to being self-employed is to have a part-time job. 
because right. you have those you have those months where you know you're you're eating good, and then you have those months where you're you're, <laughs> you're not. Where it's not so. Uh, and so having that part time job is you know it kind of balances out. If I need to, I can get more hours. Um, just delivering pizzas for the last few years, and um, so I always held on to that at least one day a week, just to have that around. Uh, and then I dropped down to I was doing like maybe once every couple weeks, just and then calling in sometimes <laughs> on those days. <laughs> Uh, at the end of last year, just be, you know, because in the in the last year, money or end of the year, money, that's big time, um, and for for YouTube, um, and I, I I kept it going in January, kind of worried because January ad revenue is bad, um, but it held on, and um, then the pandemic hit in March, and I wasn't gonna go around strangers' ho- houses handing them, you know, no pizzas sure. And, having them cough all over their cash and hand it to me. So I, uh, I quit. Um, well, I went on leave, mm. but then I quit. And ever since then, I've, it's held strong. So, um, so I've, what's, I've your, the, 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 what's, what's your mix? I mean, I don't need to know your, your actual numbers. So uh, are, you, are you purely generating an income from AdSense or, or have you got some other sources going on there as well? Uh, I got um, ad revenue and, and Patreon and the YouTube members thing. Yeah. Um, and um, sponsored videos, they, they do well. They, they are my, my, my part-time job, <laughs> self-employment. We, I, we will I, have get to have low, an offline throw conversation a sponsor in there and, about and, what you charge for a sponsored video because that's that's the thing is i don't do that many sponsorships i get and come around along once in a while obviously i'm not as appealing because mm-hmm. i'm quite i'm a little bit smaller but uh uh they come along once in a while and i kind of go like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna ask them for my day rate uh of you know because i do i do consulting work in the games industry although i'm also a yeah. kept man in the games industry at the moment as well i do i'm i'm still kind of almost full-time uh working for a game developer um mm-hmm. and um uh yeah so i'll just i'll just charge my consulting rate for for a sponsor video but you've no idea what to charge yeah i think the first time i got one i looked everywhere like hopefully someone will be talking about it i had no clue yeah and they you know they asked this is back I mean, this has been three years now two years now so i wasn't very big i was uh, maybe forty thousand subscribers i wasn't yeah. you know i was um and they they said what's your rate and it was a game i'm sure i'll play this game I, it's one of my things um and so i was like i have no idea uh, um i was like i don't know 50 bucks uh, um and i was like well i'll try this i'll just say um uh what what, what did i word it i worded it some way of like um why don't you tell me? Basically, <laughs> yeah, what that, you that's want. what you want. You gotta go I don't on. remember what I tell said exactly. What, but tell I, me what I, you're prepared to pay, and I'll let you know if that's enough. <laughs> yeah, basically is what happened. And they came back with a number that um, I did not expect. <laughs> oh, I see. So, so, so quite, a, quite a pleasing number. I've used... It, it, it was... It was uh, I was happy. Yeah. Um, and so they were like, will this work? I was like, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> So fist I've used that kind of as a guide. <laughs> so I, I assume they know how much people, uh, how much to pay YouTubers. So I use that as my guide to how much yeah. to ask. Uh, well, that's so. that's a good way to go. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I've done... The, my first couple were like, hi, I've got an indie game coming up. You do sort of management games. I've got a sort of management game. Uh, if I give you a hundred bucks, can you cover me a video? And I went... Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. That sounds like fun. I'm yeah. gonna, I, if, I, it's the sort of thing that actually fits my genre. It's always nice mm-hmm. when they come to you with something that fits what you actually cover, uh, rather than something where you kind of go like, "No, I'm not that. I'm not that channel." Uh, for a, for a hundred bucks, I went, "Yeah, sure. I'll I'll cover it. Have fun with it, and uh, and it's all good." The one mistake yep. I had with with one. Uh, sponsored set of videos that I did that I will not be making a mistake like that again was uh, allowed them to have a say on the edit before it went live. Oh yeah, I had one of those where they um, was like that, and it was I think it was four videos, maybe five, maybe five videos that I did of it. Yeah, um, they paid well, uh, but they wanted they wanted the video and be able to say if they could edit it. And they also wanted to like me to send them my my Twitter 
post that I was going to send before sending it out. They wow. Twitter okay. post. Yeah. Not that I have a Twitter following, but they wanted it. To, uh, yeah, and that was annoying. Every video, they're like, oh, "Can you change this a little bit?" I was like, I don't and you kind really, of go like, it, "I don't, I don't separate yeah, my audio. Like I just, that, I just rec- it doesn't actually change anything of any importance. It's like you know, yeah. and they don't take editorial control. They're not cha- changing the tone on stuff, but they're going like, "Oh, could you remove that like that thirty second block there and maybe use a little bit of extra footage?" And you kind of go, "Oh, it's just a hassle." Uh, I'm still going to be saying the same thing. You're going to get the same upshot. You care about <laughs> it. The people watching it just won't care. Um, yeah, yeah. No spon- sponsor videos are an interesting one. Um, yeah, uh, I, um, but I see it from I, both I, sides. So I mean, I, you know, I've I've worked with and work for you know companies who will sponsor people to to play stuff. And mm-hmm. what I always suggest is pick the channel that you know they're going to do the kind of job that you want where you yeah. can just kind of go like if you could put this up at 6 p.m on insert day here that'd be great and they'll go yeah all right and you kind of go yeah because the, just the youtuber knows anything. knows their audience and they know what yeah what they're you, you um, like their their style and tone they know their audience leave them to it yeah. let them let them yeah. do the thing they that that is the reason you're talking to them in the first place yeah but you know, they are. Yeah, no, yeah, good, right, <clears throat> okay. Uh, Do you have a? Um, so your big thing is is train fever. It's yeah, well, thing, train too? type stuff. Yeah, I know you do a lot of train stuff. I was watching your. Um, I was watching your your NIMBY rails actually. Uh, oh, um, do you know, I'm, I'm a I, fan. I, I I'm not a. Know, every... I want to know how many people bought the game off the back of watching my videos you know um, it's funny because you did it um and i watched i watched you probably watched all your videos on i think you did like four or five six of them yeah um and um i was into it um and i saw all obviously the youtuber and me saw they were doing really well on your channel and oh uh, yeah I'll, I'll play that um so i used you as a learning experience as well um happy to oblige i played it and it did terrible <laughs> It didn't go over well at all <clears throat> on my channel. Uh, that <laughs> train channel, train game. See, yep. that, uh, that's that's a nice a nice marry up. Um, uh, and yeah, I mean, I never wanted to be a train channel. I've said this a few times. I, I never wanted to be a train really? channel. I'm not that big a fan of trains. I like them, sure. <laughs> uh, you know, I've, I can I could pick a few out of a lineup as well, uh, but. And it's not the overriding passion that that some people have for for trains, and those those guys yeah. are great. But it's not me. Um, you know, I like science fiction, and I, so I, I've clearly led myself down a path that was <laughs> perhaps not uh, th- not the, <clears throat> the wisest. But you know what? I'm enjoying being there. I embrace the trainitude. But when when I was back in the, the early days of building up my channel, I would let people who started you know, subscribing and commenting regularly on my videos, they would add me on Steam. And I'd go, yeah, come on in. And mm-hmm. so I've got like a couple of hundred people from the early days uh, who, who, who who are on my Steam friends list. Um, I, I no longer accept anybody at all. If I don't recognize you, I'll go, up, nope, block, 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 block. I don't care who yeah. you are. You ain't getting in unless I'm, I'm letting you in. Um, don't accept friends from people you don't know. That's what I tell my kids. I, yeah, yeah, we're terrib- <laughs> setting a terrible. Setting a terrible example. Um, uh, but when I played Nimby Rails, because the dev came to me directly, he was going. He'd obviously gone to YouTube, YouTube, and wrote train games, and, uh, <laughs> and looked at the, t- the the top ten channels and went like that guy came to me and goes. I think I had to I had to hunt him down because I after I watched yours I had to email him. Yeah, see if I can get a key. Yeah, well, he came to he came to me, and he came to uh, another channel, uh, Skystorm, who uh, who covers the same kind of stuff as I do, uh, mm-hmm. and is triple the size. Uh, and he he covered it, and it did quite well. I covered it and did it really well. And I think that we just have a slightly different audience mix. But when I started playing it, nobody on my friends list had it. By the time I'd finished, it was like 50, 70 people on my friends list had picked it up. <laughs> and so I was going like. If only Steam did kickbacks, that would be that would be nice. That would be lovely. Um, yeah, 
it's one of the it's one of the nice things that the Epic Store does. Epic's nice. Uh, there, that's they they are very generous to. I to know. Us. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, to, to, I mean, for a lot of people are angry about Epic, but uh, the, the, from on a, what on a typical basis, if you if you get if you use a creator code to pick something up off uh, off Epic, the uh, uh, think about the ten percent mark. Uh, it varies wildly from game to game. Mm-hmm. Now, however much you paid for it, think about ten percent is what the the creator who you use their code for gets. I think as a it key. tells you, doesn't it? Whenever you buy it, it tells you this guy's going to get this much. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. of a different one. And it's it's great. Because, yeah. you, you know, I, I, I played uh, Airborne Kingdom in January, which, mm-hmm. oh, I loved that game. I loved that game so much I finished it. I never finished oh, games. You? I also have a tendency to play games that can't be finished, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I didn't know that one could be finished either. No, I, no, I, I, three I, videos I finished on that one. it. It's, and it's not, it's not too long either. You can get through it in, uh, in oh, I don't know, 12 hours, 14 hours, something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. But... Uh, yeah, it didn't do well on my channel. It did okay. Um, it introduced some more canon uh, of characters into my my back catalogue of characters that I've introduced, so that's all good. Uh, but uh, quite a few people went off and bought it as a result because it was only available on Epic. Mm. Um, and uh, and you know it's a not a not insignificant sum. I, mean, it's pro- I probably made five six hundred dollars out of just ah. kickbacks from people buying it. That's that's I think that's maybe more than I've made all together on Epic. Oh, it's, it's a small do, amount, but it. I do all right. You just have to embrace the sellout once in a while. You, <laughs> do, you just have to. It's like I've been I've been pushing baseball caps. Hold on, wait, where is it? There we are. <laughs> Available for a limited time only. Oh, you got your camera in the way. I, yep. I can't see it. You've got to have it. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I've I've been pushing those over the last week uh, because we're my I work with a, a merch company. That's a, that was a funny conversation. Is uh, they work they work with some big channels. So they work with uh, Yogscast. They work with Spiffing Brit. Uh, they work with uh, a couple. And uh, and I had a conversation with them uh, last year, early last year, and uh, and through it, I thought. I'm auditioning to see if I'm good enough to be on their uh, their roster of, of of channels that they provide kind of merchandise and and sort of agency services for. Uh, mm-hmm. And then only about three quarters of the way through the conversation, I went like, "Am I auditioning you? So am I seeing if I want? Am I supposed to be asking the questions? Because <laughs> I thought, <laughs> but it was it was completely the other way around. They wanted to work with me, and they were doing their hard sell." Uh, and I was, th- and I was nice. thinking, like, I'm there to see if you know my my aspirations and likely growth lines up with what they think is going to happen. Very yeah. funny conversation. Um, but we're experimenting with a because uh, I've never done very well for merch. Do you run merch? I do. I think I've man. Yeah, nobody buys any, anything. No. Why would you? No. Well, exactly. <laughs> I I I, only got, I bought some. I ex- uh, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, right. <laughs> I, I only got into making merch because I wanted it. Uh, I bought some, and um, I I got recognized once while I was at the zoo, and nice. I've never worn my merch since. Cause I don't want to get recognized. Uh, I've never. It had was it. great. Never, I thought, never been oh, recognized. Imagine the day I get recognized, and it happened. That was great. As long as it never happens again. No, 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 my <laughs> I'm, other I'm, half I'm, routinely I'm, says to me, she goes, "At some point, we're going to have some random dude come up to you and go." You're kind of failure, and I got to go. <laughs> yes, I am. And she goes. At that point, I am disowning you. Um, <laughs> I know, we can never go anywhere proper again. Um, yep. Then you'll be the big time. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> I, you know what? I think this wraps it up quite nicely for a for a first a first foray. Um, but for a little bit of context at the end of the video at the start if you're still here you, you probably don't care about context but uh the the context is that uh i don't know who reached out to who first but it would became apparent that we would both started our channels on the same day so probably three years ago four years ago uh and yeah uh, and we were almost exactly the same size for year after year after year i mean obviously mm-hmm. you know milk rooms flipping exploded all over the flaming place since then um but we've always been going. Oh, we should do a collab of some description. We should we should hook up and and combine our. One of powers. these days. Just you wait. 
the, we're just waiting for the right game is what it is yeah yeah something will, something will turn up i'm sure you know <laughs> don't, given that we both play single player the entire time um <laughs> i'm sure something to get our social isolationism working together uh so yeah so we decided but no actually you posted in your video your monthly update video for february uh you said i don't have any youtube friends and i said well that's patently untrue <laughs> i go how quickly you forget <clears throat> uh so uh, we decided just to have a chat if you liked this chat stick a comment below about what conversation you would like us to have next if nobody puts that in there or if very few people put it in there we won't have any more conversations disown each other no longer youtube brothers no no this will be a one night stand that you know we both deeply <laughs> regret and refuse to talk about <laughs> god i've done my part of the out you've got to wrap you've got to take it home now so oh i've set um, i've set you up there's the layup Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, three quarters of the Colonel's face. Sometimes half. If I... <laughs> there we go. I don't, um, I'll, I'll do that, some quality enough. control on that next time. <laughs> You're good. <clears throat> anyway, um, I don't have anything else to say. Um, do you, do this you was have fun. A, do you I... have a standard sign off? Thanks for watching. Is that it? Keep keep it simple, yeah. How, how do you know See that you next finished? Time. Do you just go for thanks for watching and that's it? I've I I have um, I have that internal YouTube clock, twenty five minute hits, I, and I look over twenty five minutes. I used to this have that. This is a good that. place to stop. I don't have it anymore, though. I've done, everything gets out of control. I, I look over and it goes forty seven minutes. I go, oh, I didn't want this to be a forty seven minute video. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I get lost on. in the game and and it it goes a little longer, but. I'll show you how a professional does it, right? Anyway, I've been Colonel Failure. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of behavior, uh, why, not, why not subscribe? There are worse things that you can do to yourself. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we'll see you respectively on our individual channels. Maybe both. Maybe you decide that both channels is the way to go. And uh, that would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, wouldn't that be good? Two monitors. Yeah. Why not? In stereo. In space on one screen. On yeah, the rails just, on the other. Just mute the one you're less interested in and let us know <laughs> the, which channel it was muted. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Cheerio. See? I use Thanks for watching. As a, as a, you know, that's how I let, I let people know I'm done here. And then I go into time. my outro. And th you're getting an oh, outro. I don't have an outro. See, I don't do that. Yeah, I know. I got, I I'm, got, too, I'm too lazy for intro outro. editing. I, uh, <laughs> years ago, I decided... <laughs> No outros, no editing, do the video, throw it up there, done. Smash it, chuck it up. Yeah, no, yep. that's, that's the way to victory. Well, I don't know, you tell me. I mean, you, I mean, more of this kind of thing? Hmm? I mean, okay, this one was a little bit, uh, you know, just YouTubists talking about YouTubing, which is extraordinarily self-indulgent. Uh, but Nukrim and I, uh, we have been uh, in. Uh, yeah, we've been chatting to each other regularly. Uh, after I think I originally spotted that we had launched at pretty much exactly the same time, and and for about three years we were exactly the same size, uh, growing at, at the same pace, and seem, seeming to have the same peaks and troughs. Uh, so you know, we'd been intended to do some kind of catch up type behavior type thing type collaboration type something, uh, and. Uh, this one just reared its ugly head and well yeah there you go you've got two beautiful heads to look at you lucky people um but yeah if you want more of this sort of stuff i, I could find a slot for it i could find more people to talk to i could just go talk to people i don't i mean i'll do less uh, revealing my uh, my startling uh, origin story because i think you've probably heard it about 500 times now um so uh, so we've done enough of that uh, but uh, but there you go. No, I don't, alternatively, maybe you think that that young Nook and myself would make for uh, an interesting regular uh, podcast on a theme, if there were a theme, with a with a theme of some description. Comments are there for your disposal and uh, and and what have you. Just you know, have an opinion. Do do it. Do it. Do it.
Do it. Have an, op have an opinion. Throw it. Throw the opinion in this direction. And then we'll know stuff about things that we know stuff about. And that's that's all that then. I've really got nothing else for you today. I've no idea what I'm going to put in the, uh, of the old scrolly whatnot. That's going to be a tricky one. No, uh, but uh, there you go. Anyway, I'm all done here. Thanks for watching. Yeah, cheerio.